Bill is Board of Trustees meeting to order on Monday, <coughs> July 17th at 6.32 on my watch. Uh, we are holding this as a hybrid meeting, meaning that we are in Village Hall, also available on Zoom and a audio call-in, both of which are at the top of the agenda. Uh, we have a quorum. The agenda was properly posted, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have public appearances, public's opportunity to speak. We do have a few forms submitted, um, starting off with Emily Kocher from uh, 203 Dunkel Court, uh, just expressing um, her support of the library programming. Next, we have um, Nancy Engel on 302 Southern Grange. Um, in support of the library being prioritized as a capital uh, expense, or non-capital expense, I sh should say. And then uh, in the room, I think, is Stephen Way, 100 Coil Parkway, support of library, pro library programming, uh, funding within the village, and would like to speak. So please come up, and there's a little button there that's uh, it's got a person looks like they're talking. So you press that, it'll turn red, and then you should be good to go. There we go. So uh, good evening all. Um, as the uh, vice president of the Village Library Board, I wanna thank the Village Board as well as the staff uh, for all of your all the previous funding and efforts to support library programs over the last six or so months, however long it's been, it's been quick. Um, the funding has gone towards 75 uh, unique events that represent 115 hours of programming. These events have benefited children, parents, teens, adults, and seniors. These non-capital services have provided library events within our community, which keeps people in the village to continue to visit our uh, coffee shops, restaurants, and retail. These services allow our community to exercise their minds, bodies, and spirits, which grows knowledge and partnership. A great example of it has been the creation of the DEI uh, Little Free Libraries at the Drumland res Residence. Today we had 94 people show up for the Wonders of Physics event. So just uh, a great, great turnout uh, for that. The uh, support from our police department with the teddy bear sleepover or whatever, that was a amazing event and, and I know a lot of people uh, participated with this. And I believe we now have a uh, wait lift for the Grilling Dave. Oh, I'm sorry, Grilling with Dave, right? Grilling with grilling, Dave. Grilling in the Grove. Grilling in the Grove, all right. So appreciate you volunteering to do that, Dave. And that's actually one of the things I want to applaud Tracy for. She's a village library programming and outreach uh, specialist. Um, she's been able to get volunteers together to put on these programs, use our funds wisely, and really create a, 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 a service that's already benefited a lot of, a lot of our, uh, our neighbors and, and friends and families. So uh, that being said, I'd like to uh, thank you for the previous funding as well as hopefully continuing that funding moving forward. Thank you and have a great meeting. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you. Um, all right. Any others in the room or on Zoom that wish to speak? Again, we just ask you to share your name, your address, municipality, and hold your comments to no more than three minutes. So with that, anybody in Zoom? I don't see anybody. Okay. All right, then we'll move on. Uh, next thing we have discussed and consider our meeting minutes from our board meeting held way back in June 19th. Uh, it seems like we have due to the fourth holiday. So any questions, comments regarding the minutes as presented? Make a motion to approve the minutes as written. First by David, is there a second? Second. Second by Brittany. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. Then we slide down to unfinished business, starting with the discuss the 2023-2024 prioritization of non-capital related initiatives.
Um, so I, I had emailed the board um, what I had received so far, and um, uh, David sent some additional priorities, and I was going to share my screen here, but for whatever reason, the, um, it's not letting me log in to our network, so I'm going to uh, email you in a, in a second here, for those that have a computer in front of you, uh, David's, David's list, but otherwise um, the, the, the list that you were emailed is uh, what we have to date. Thanks, Matt. Any other comments from any board members? All right. So, Matt, we have just a few more then to, to submit. Is that correct? Um, again, there's no no requirement that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just on here for general discussion. Um, you know, and then th the board could rank these or whatever you guys would would like to do um, for the next steps. Okay. Comments from board members? Can, can we just move forward and rank them? Like once we get David's and yep. bring, bring them forward? Yeah. I think yep. the... Go ahead. I thought we talked about not putting fiscal responsibility. We may have talked about it, but I think there's still, you know, each of us can contribute. To I mean, that. you can add, you can add whatever you want, right? Yeah, but exactly. I, but again, it was like, it was, again, we've had a lot of heartburn for the last 12 months over having that on there. Like again, it's it's table stakes. Yeah. So uh, again, I think everyone's entitled to that. Fair. Their list. Do you think, and I don't remember how we were going to rank, but I wonder if we could do like a high, medium, low or something, maybe not with numbers, but I, I'm having a hard time trying to decide how I would rank these in a, with each one only having a one or a two, but if I could make these my high priorities and these my medium, that feels more genuine. Are there duplicates on the list? Or Maybe it would be smart to just go through the list and disqualify, you know, hey, this one doesn't need to be, and just get it down to where there's no duplicates. There's stuff that we, David, table stakes, we don't need to have that on there. That was one of mine. I just felt like it sent the right message that we, that we think about it. Um, but if everybody believes that's table stakes, I do too, but I just want, I want to be able to send that message when I, when I put it on there. You can always just have guiding principles Talk about, you know, rank rank the things that you actually want to put staff and and resources into, and and some of them just say, and these are important guiding principles in how we how we allocate resources, and and their fiscal responsibility would be a perfect example of that. So it sounds like uh, board members now have homework. Okay. I was wondering, do we do we have? To rank them, although I do like Sarah's idea of just high, medium, low, but I'm wondering if we can just have a list, you know, going into budget season of these are the things that we want to focus on as we develop the, the 2024 budget. I'm, I would be in favor of not ranking them, but, you know, I could, I could figure out how to maybe do that. Might be one point on each thing, but we'll see. I like the idea of high, medium, low. I'm just, I don't know how we would show that as a board-wide priority, like averaging everybody's, one person has, you know, three people have high for this one, one person has low, the other have medium. I don't know how you say what that is. You can always assign a number to that and then average. I mean, it's whatever number you want. Okay. And that's, I guess one way to do it, which is kind of like ranking them, but yeah, but that way everything gets gets yeah. a number, and that way we can't. Nobody's going to say, "Well, you guys didn't think X was a priority because you didn't give it any numbers." So I think that's a better way to approach it than no. just giving people twenty points. Others, all right, good with high, medium, low, and on your list, each list. Let me get back and them back to Matt, and then we can run through them again next meeting. Sure. 
and that'll, as, that, as was said, it'll kick us up for the budget cycle, I think is what we mentioned, getting ready for that. Um, Cameron, you want to provide just a brief update on the, the capital side of, of things and where that's at? Um, sure. Um, Matt and I have worked or, or slow or very close to a final uh, budget timeline. We're just verifying some quorums. Um, but we'll be happy to share that here in the near future. Um, all the departments have submitted their capital requests, both um, from a structure for, or major projects and equipment. And so right now I'm going through with each department head and talking about you know what flexibility, if any, certain projects have, uh, developing some narratives to share for you. Um, once that's done, uh, I'll compile a packet that has all that information, all the projects, and what what those projects include, and uh, send out a survey for you guys to rank those projects via the capital prioritization process that was established. Um, so I'm hoping to get that out near the end of the week or beginning of the week next week. Um, but likely, uh, if, if you don't fill out the survey, I might have to hunt you guys down. All right, anything else with that? Then we'll move down to uh, discuss and consider the developer's agreement regarding Amazon.com services, LLC. Just, can we just go back quick? I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were moving on right away. So what is our homework exactly? I, I like to be an A student here and I don't, <laughs> not sure that oh, I'm you wanna, clear. Are you gonna overcheat? <laughs> Uh, I am not sure that I am clear on what I'm doing. Where did we land? So we're going to high, medium, low them, as okay. you suggested, uh, for each of us, and then get them back to Matt. And okay. then they'll be... So each, so like we would take Chris's and I'd say no, high, I, medium, low? No, I would do no. your own. Do your own. Wait, I'll check. Now, now I am. I'm even more confused now. Oh, I guess... That's what I was saying, because we could remove the duplicate. Well, we can do that too. I, I guess I, we've in the past we've just done our own, but it, they, no, well, Matt's always consolidated the list, yeah, down to one, and then we rank them from there. Which isn't perfect either, because um, yeah, unless they're exactly the same, someone might, you know, I, I hate to take liberty and say lump two people's ideas together, and then they're voted on together, and they might mean, you know, they might mean something different to each individual, but I can. I can try to consolidate them for ones that are that seem to be duplicates. I mean, if they're literally duplicates, certainly, um, and then do my best with the other ones. And then the, the board wants to rank all of them, correct? Each member. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Yep. All right. Then now we'll move on to discuss and consider the developer agreement regarding Amazon.com Services LLC. I don't know, Larry, if you want to kick us off, or we want to, or you want to have, or have Jason. So we'll be off to discuss to Amazon project moving and uh, on a on a accelerated timeline now. Uh, very exciting. I hit some of the high points in the in the um, the cover memo, the, uh, the obviously that's it's this has been off discussed by the board, but I guess the key is it's a two hundred and forty five million dollar minimum um, construction or, or project. Um, that's the guaranteed minimum assessed value. Uh, very significant. Uh, the uh, the the grant the the TID support is entirely uh, developer financed, and uh, that takes away all the risk to the, to the village, which is the way we prefer these deals to work. Um, and uh, they're talking about 1,500, up to 1,500 jobs. So it's, um, it's a real significant project. Uh, the, the, the status of the project right now is that there's, there's the developer's still working on the transportation uh, impact analysis, finalizing that. There's some, um, some technical uh, changes and approvals that'll be needed along the way, engineering and so on. Um, but for the most part, the, the, the sort of arrangement with the village is, is set here in this, in this development agreement. Um, 
there's going to be a lot of public improvements. Uh, this is going to serve and open up the, uh, the uh, development of the property to the north and west and uh, really kick off the development in that in that TID and, and north, uh, really for most of the village property north of north of the interstate. So I'd take any questions. I did, I did want to mention, if you recall, um, almost two years ago now, we did enter into a development agreement with Gray Wolf, who was the former uh, owner of this site. And um, that, that agreement uh, requires us to provide 10% of increment uh, up to two and a half million dollars as, as new increment is generated in the TID. So uh, approval of this and construction of this project will, will put that, that deal into effect, just as a reminder. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I don't know what hasn't been discussed multiple times, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'll just add in maybe for questions that um, even though this project's been discussed for a while now, the idea for this type of development north of the interstate has been uh, ongoing and, and part of the village's overall vision for um, going on 13 years from uh, when the annexation, initial annexation occurred, I believe in 2010. Um, and then there was, uh, it took a lot of, a lot of years of, of planning and infrastructure, um, and then um, the creation of the TIF district finally in 2018, which, um, which, which led then uh, Gray Wolf and other property owners to uh, start feeling confident to uh, combine parcels to make them more feasible for this kind of scale, scale development. And um, at, uh, it's, it's quite, the, quite the first project to kick off the TID being 245 million. Um, the, the, all properties in the, in the village's current boundaries is a little north of one billion. So you can imagine the, the positive impacts uh, that, will, that will bring. Um, and uh, in addition to the, the jobs like Larry mentioned, but also the, the jobs and activity that that will bring during, during construction of the project and, and, and other interest from um, you know, other national scale developers that will um, will be more interested in the area and the village in general, uh, too. So, a um, lot to be excited about, and um, yeah, a lot of uh, cer certainly a um, lot of staff, even before some of our time that that has worked on this. But a um, lot of great work by our attorney Larry here and um, Aaron Ruth Planner, our whole development team, including. JJ and Josh, uh, Josh Straka with uh, Strand and his team and, um, and, and really everybody, um, many boards even before this board that, that had the initial vision uh, for this area and, um, and there's still uh, more to come after this including you know what we hope to be another uh, uh, industrial park north of, north of the Amazon site. Um, so yeah, those are my comments. Can you just quick remind me, what is our current assessed value for the village? 1.1 so billion think, with a B. So equalized value, I think it's 1.6 billion. I think assessed value is like 944 million. Okay. Um, and that's just the difference between uh, the fair market Cam value of the property. Cameron, I think that's tit out that you're- The 944? Yeah. Uh, I don't have, sorry. Well, anyways, I, I was just was trying to put into perspective, this is like 25% of our current total assessed value. So it's just pretty significant. I just wanted to call out the significance yeah. of that amount. Thanks. I'll go. Um, first of all, thanks for all your work. Really appreciate it. Um, there's some good things in here, like the uh, that they're not gonna be using Highway N. That's a good, <clears throat> Uh, provision. I'm just trying to think of worst case scenarios. So, like, what would happen if, say, they break ground? It's like a two year construction thing. 18 months, economy tanks, and they don't want to do it anymore. What happens then? The developer agreement has safeguards uh, in place for both the public infrastructure and the increment. So, on the public infrastructure, they'll be providing, the developer will be providing a letter of credit if, if the market tanks and they don't. Um, complete the public improvements, we'll be able to draw on that letter of credit and complete those ourselves. So that's the public improvements. 
And then the, the, uh, there's a, a shortfall guarantee on tax payments based on that $245 million guaranteed assessed value, which by the way, I think all parties expect the dollar amount to be significantly north of that, uh, uh, as, mu as much north of that as would be another significant project in itself. So 245 is our base. But that, but the, 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 we do have a corporate guarantee from Amazon proper in this development agreement. And so the taxes on that money are gonna get paid. And so once, once, once the deal is signed and everything becomes vested, um, the incentive to stop on something like this will be very, very, very low. Thanks. Um, and then what's the process here? We, we approve this and then they sign it or have they already signed it or? They have not. But yeah, we, we, that's generally, once we get board approval, then John and Lisa sign and we hand it over to them to sign. Okay, thank you. Make a motion to approve the developer agreement regarding Amazon.com services, LLC. Second. As written. Second. Motion by David, seconded by Sarah. Any further discussion? Do we want to, I don't know if he wanted to speak or not, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have Jason um, who has been on a number of the Zoom calls as well as Terminal Co. Morgan on the Zoom that have been with this project all along. Um, Jason was kind enough to join us here in the hall and Morgan is kind enough to join us on Zoom. I don't know if either of you want to say anything or totally up to you. And again, we appreciate you being here, as well as Morgan. Uh, Jason Manglis, uh, Lead Economic Development in the Central U.S. for Amazon, uh, 1245 East Washington Avenue, uh, is our offices here in Madison. Um, I'll make my statement very brief and just echo what Matt said. I think we, we appreciate the partnership of the village staff uh, and the leadership of this board along with the commissions and, and committees that we've dealt with throughout this process. And uh, we're, we're super excited to keep that partnership going through development and construction as well as through launch. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jason. I don't know if Morgan, you want to say anything from Trevor Crow's side or not? Totally up to you. You've spoken no, a lot at these meetings. Yeah, I would just love to echo what Jason said and appreciate the partnership of everyone here. I'm really looking forward to continue the momentum and um, break ground on this project. All right. Thanks, Morgan. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. All right. Uh, next, then we move down to new business. Uh, we have a discuss and consider a block party application from Ken Ball. Oops. They're not on, so. Oh, they're not on. No. Oops. So it's a straightforward um, application. It has gone to um, the other departments for review, and everybody is in approval. So it just is up to you. I'll make a motion that we approve the request for the Black Party application for Ken Bull. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Uh, any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? They have abstained. Motion carries. Then we move to discuss and consider ordinance <coughs> 052023, amending chapter 219 1 on noise. Uh, there's a memo in the packet. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just if you would like to make that amendment so that it would be um, the possibility of being approved by village staff. We run into timing issues sometimes, so that's really the, the essence of the change. I'll make a motion. Okay. Oh, we're always asked to look for ways to make board meetings shorter on things that you always say yes to. This is, it's not always, but staff have a pretty good sense too of what would work if somebody's gonna ask for a live music at 3 a.m., it's gonna be a no. But you, it, it, it's just one of those things that maybe can streamline what you, you do. You stole the words out of my mouth there. I was like, 
have we ever not approved a sound amplification? Like, I, it, it, reasonableness is pretty easy to see in these requests. Yeah, I guess at least just out of jeopardy factor, like it, in your time, have you ever has there ever been an amplification request that we haven't approved? No, not in my time. Okay. Some, somebody's going to make the motion. You were correct, quicker on the draw here. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, changes to ordinance 05-2023 regarding amending chapter 219-1 noise as uh, proposed in the packet. Mr. by David, is there a second? I'll second. Right, second by Sarah. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. John? Well, yeah. before we go off this topic, so it, I think it would be helpful for the board to just give direction to staff then. The, all the ordinance does is allow, it doesn't now have to go to the board, but if you can give some direction as to, you know, you know it when you see it for Sean, you know, if it's, if it's something that seems like it'll be controversial, bring it before the board. If not, I mean, that's what I would recommend if you just kind of nod to that and he'll, he'll know what his direction is. That sounds good to me. I mean, if Sean, if it's a, if it's a, Part you know yeah right. Is there a way to just email the board saying this this application has been approved? Let us know if you have any objections. Sure, like sort of a passive review, I guess. Kind of like with the um, liquor. I was, I was going to say we probably won't say let us know if you have any. We don't want to make it seem like there's a a vote. Yeah. yeah. But it, you know, I think goes without saying to speak up if there's sure. if there's an issue, but. In, in general, you know, I think we'll just make sure there's a, a note to just to keep everyone aware of what's being approved. So, you know, if there's some complaint, I mean, mainly it's letting making sure the PD is well aware of what's going on. So if they receive a complaint, um, you know, they can respond to it appropriately. But yeah, certainly letting the board know the ones that are out there. We may actually want so to. So you can attend, right? So you can attend. <laughs> Is that enough direction, Larry? John, is that enough? Block parties are next on the list. Just, yeah. wa just wait. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that. Next, then discuss and consider the sound application permit for BB Jacks. Again, just a straightforward um, application from BB Jacks um, covering their dates of when they have um, events on their outdoor um, patio. And um, yeah, that's it. All right, thanks, Lisa. Is this in perpetuity? It says just 20 to 23 at the top. Yeah. Well, that's the permit date, but that's. Oh. I think it's just the cover. Normally we do them annually, Chris, okay. um, and we make them do them each year. Okay. Or we ask them to do it each year, I should say. Any questions, comments regarding this? I guess, why is it, why is Maryland and Albertina the applicant, but then there's an oversighted event? Because so based on the email, it tells me that Gray Wolf Partner is the ac applicant, but BB Jacks is, has oversight. So I would say that um, they have a, it seems they have a lot of turnover with staff for their management team. Um, and so I think sometimes that's why these things don't always happen. And that's- I would say owner versus Gray Wolf being the owner of the property, probably overall responsible for the application. And then those would be the staff that will be managing it. Right. Because ultimately, I, well, I don't know. I'm just reading into the email addresses. I guess it doesn't matter in the end, but- um, have they not done live music? I feel they've had the stage there for a while. I feel like they've they've had music. They've had, but they didn't have an application. So somebody told them, "Hey, you better get an application." Well, it came yes, it came about in a roundabout way. They're having an event, and we're like, "Hey, um, like I said, we normally this isn't something that we put out. We, it's on them to apply, and normally they'll do one blanket um, application for the whole year covering their events." And like I said, they have a lot of turnover. Um, and so I think it's, you know, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Okay. I just did, 
feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, right. Because the stage, I think it's been at least since last year. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the sound application permit for BUJAX as written. Second. Uh, we have a motion by David, a second by Chris. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Maybe abstain? Motion carries. Sliding down to uh, Village Board uh, Commissions and Committees. First up is the Library Board. David. Yep, uh, so we met on Wednesday, June 21st, 6 p.m. Um, <clears throat> approved the minutes, uh, and then we had an, a really long, lengthy conversation um, around the library budget uh, and just kind of where the state of play is with things. And JJ wrote a memo and Cindy wrote a memo. And I think there was, um, it was, I'd say a hard conversation, but one that had to be had uh, about wh what the realities are when, and how, how soon or how far away we could build a library. Um, I think there were some realizations over the last two months about where, where our fiscal situation is and how it relates to a library and all the other things going on. So there was a, a really long, lengthy conversation, lot, lots of, I would call it cathartic, <laughs> I guess is how I would put it. Um, I think it was good conversation, but I, again, it was, a, it was not an easy conversation to have, I'll put it that way. Um, from there, we talked about programming uh, and just kind of in general, like both the library budget uh, coming and then the programming kind of dovetailed into each other. Um, really good things. We're doing a lot of good things about programming. There were a lot of good questions about what, what's next year going to look like, and so we've kind of pivoted towards, um, hey, we can't build a, a physical library anytime soon, but we are doing library programming, so let's, let's hang our hat on that and continue to do that. So we talked about that. Um, talked about uh, some of the outreach. Um, Tracy's doing a really fantastic job, as Stefan came and talked about. Um, we then approved the, bud, uh, approved the vouchers. Uh, there was a facility subcommittee uh, report, uh, but again, state of play, it just kind of is what it is. Um, <clears throat> uh, Cindy gave a report, uh, talked about uh, the status of the FM, uh, FGM, she put FMG, FGM uh, status report for, the, uh, for what they're doing, uh, for their work. Um, talked about outreach and engagement and then kind of gave an update on grants. Um, and then Megan Swanson gave her a, a report from the friends, uh, and then we closed the meeting. Next meeting is uh, Thursday, Ju July 20th, so this Thursday. Did I miss anything, JJ? Nope. All right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, David. Uh, next then, Parks. Heidi. Find my mute button. Thank you. Uh, so we met back on June 22nd. And we discussed the parks and open space plan, which we'll be um, looking at considering under plan commission because uh, we sent it over there. Um, we also have an item to consider about a camp out. Uh, the wheels park is coming along and we talked a little bit about a grand opening ribbon cutting. Um, Sean was gonna look at some dates and uh, how the progress is going and I'm sure he'll loop us in when we kind of can zero in on a time frame. Uh, we also talked about scholarship opportunities for our programs uh, to make sure that our programming is accessible for all residents in the village, um, especially with uh, new buildings that have opened uh, that are income based. Right now, our scholarships are 50% um, if you qualify for free and reduced lunch program, but that does leave out adults seniors, um, kids that aren't in school yet, and kind of want to look at how we might modify that program so more kids are able to participate in our rec programs. Um, you know, they'd be doing positive things in the community, and I think that that is something the, the Parks Committee would very much like to support. So we'll hear more about that as Sean gathers some more information about what other communities do. We looked at um, some of the things that Madison does, but we're going to try to look at some of the smaller communities around also. Um, Sean's been working with the university on the dog park designs. Um, 
I'm not sure if the AEDs are here yet. They, I don't think they were as of our meeting. Uh, I think that's everything we talked about, and then we'll just have to discuss and consider on the camp out at Bakken Park. Sean, let me know if I missed anything. You're good. All right, thanks, Heidi. Uh, all right, so we do have the discuss and consider regarding the camp out for the MG boys soccer team. Questions, comments regarding that? I'll make a motion that we approve suspending ordinance 230-3 on August 18th, 2023 to allow the MG boys soccer team and chaperones to occupy Rock and Park during closed park hours. Second. All right, we have a first from Sarah, second from David. Any further discussion? Larry, can we add this one to the list as well? Because I don't remember any of these ever being denied. Yes, Boy Scouts and Soccer Club is another, yeah. All right, uh, then all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. All right, let's move to the Fire District Commission. David, Vince, or Chris? You got... Uh, all right. All right. So we met on uh, June 26, 6:30. Um, so the chief reported there was an air leak. They they should have it fixed shortly. Um, the festival report um, for the firemen's festival. They didn't have the numbers back yet, but it, he said they that it seemed comparable to previous years. It was a good event. Um, with respect to the vehicle fires and electric vehicles, um, they did put out some questions to the Chiefs Association. Um, some said they did use the fire blankets, uh, other, uh, but nobody else really discussed any other solutions. Um, may look at purchasing a couple of blankets next year um, for that. Uh, there was a discuss consider new locks for the emergency services building that to replace six of those. Um, and uh, there was a, uh, a fire inspection failure at the building. And so all the fire doors have been <laughs> fixed at the fire station, um, which is great. And that was the meat of it. So. Only thing I'd add and actually want to kind of have a conversation uh, with this body is around the locks at the emergency services building. So three of us kind of afterwards kind of for a brief second, I think, kind of touch base on it, but it, it, Vince and I think had a lot more to say during the meeting around the locks. But so today, um, if you look at the at Dane County as a whole, most, especially municipal fire departments, like it's it's another it's like any other building in the community, right? So it's usually badged access, right? So um, with this, it's a it's a key punch code. It's like a like a manual kind of analog code that you type in um, when they have issues with employees, specifically EMS, um, if there's issues with a, with a former employee or disgruntled employee, they have to go around and have to like literally manually change the locks. There was, a, there was an incident where someone was having a men mental health issue and it was like, we need to change the locks like right now. Um, and so in past commissions, um, EMS and fire have come to the fire commission and said, hey, can we get a security system in this building? Can we do something legit, you know, modern day secure? And there has been a, a reluctance to, to pay for that, okay? So what uh, Chief Lang did is like, okay, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I need some sort of security. We can't do the full full boat security system, uh, but we can't keep doing what we're doing. So, so he went and he talked to a vendor um, that came up with, uh, a lock that's that's pretty decent lock, um, but in order to change the lock, you have you need a tablet to go to that lock, and you have to do them one at a time. And so my point, and, and Vince, I I think you agreed with me. Feel free to disagree with me now, but like, if we're gonna do this, I feel like we should do this the right way. And there was a concern around just these these locks alone. There was 14 in total. Deerfields, they they have to do their own, but for us, it's just six. Um, 
even to add the cloud base to change those locks, it's still, it's about 150 a month, or don't quote me on the numbers, but it's, it's not cheap. Um, I then met with Eric a few weeks later, or about a week later, and, and kind of clarified my points with Eric, and I was like, look, this is, we're a growing community, and there are, there are lots of medications and lots of really dangerous stuff in that building that we don't want people to have access to, including people that know how to use it, or maybe they're disgruntled, or they're, for whatever reason, I think we need to look at other options. So I, I really implored him to kind of reach out to different security firms and, and get more quotes and reach out to, to the police department, reach out to Chief Gary and, and say like, can we, maybe these locks would work for a door or two, but I think running around with somebody with a tablet changing the six locks while you're taking care of somebody else or kicking somebody out or you know invent some horror scenario just didn't seem legit to me. It just, it seemed kind of Mickey Mouse, <laughs> frankly, is what it was. So Vince, Chris, it, and yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, it it wasn't going to be an inexpensive endeavor. You'd have to run network cable, change yeah. door, stretch. Like instead of using a, what they're getting is you know just like you have at your house. You punch the code and the little thing spins and it opens up. We're talking about door strikes. Um, you know, you got to pull on it and the thing opens up, and that requires network and to every door. So I mean it. It's significant, but if we're going to be in that building for a long period of time, it's probably worth the investment at some point. Mark, I'm, I'm curious your take on this. Good, bad, or indifferent? Unfortunately, you're dealing with an older building that, with a system that was adequate at the time, um, but I would uh, encourage upgrading the security at that building. Um, the other portion of that building is that is the EOC for the village and the town. Um, so again, there's some equipment there that has relevance to us and our operations and should something bad occur that we need to address long term, you're going to be working out of that facility. You definitely don't want just anybody waltzing in there while you're dealing with critical incidents. It's, um, Eric also mentioned too, like most, and I'm probably going to murder this, but like you, most fire departments will have a, a phone in the vestibule. I don't know if that's required or not, but ours does, but, um, the lock for the door is on the outer door and not on the inner door. So what good is the phone? If you like, there's things like that. So it's just, it's, and again, I realize it's an older building, right? But it just, I, for me, I was like. I don't know when we can pay for all of it, but I like let's come up with a plan, right, a strategy, and then figure out how to pay for it, right? And so, um, I know that Eric's going to go get more quotes and more ideas, and you know, but it's just there's no cameras on the building. I mean, like it's just it, the, it's a laundry list of things. Everybody's kind of nodding their head like they know. So I'm late to the party, but it's just it was kind of disappointing. I'll put it that way. So is that something that's going to be on the future agendas and in the budget discussion then, I'm assuming? Yeah. So you guys teed it up, right? Yeah. Okay. So if it's going to be on the 2024 uh, budget request or capital prioritization, it should be to me yesterday. So I will, you, uh, I will let Nick and Eric know. All right. And then if it's not in 2024 and it's further out, I would say a lot of those similar needs exist both here and at yeah. MSB. So there might be an opportunity for scale yep. on multiple projects with one system. So, okay. I have a question about the meeting if we're done on that topic. I was just reviewing the minutes and the May minutes um, say that, um, it said Hampton said the town has been billed for the new tender and asked if that cost should be split as per the new fire protection agreement. Consensus was that it should be. So I'm Actually, checking in on that. I think that may have been like two or three meetings ago. Okay. And then there it was discussion May. after. Oh, yeah, this was June. Okay, so June then what 26th. happened in June? Did we get these? Like they, they were going to call John <laughs> and uh, Cameron, I think, was because we basically said we, we're, we're not going to do it. So um, there wasn't really consensus. No. Okay. I wonder if the minutes might 
be amended? Well, I think the to... minutes were accurate for what was said at that time in May. Yeah, so in May we, we talked about the radios um, and then a bill was sent to the village hall yeah. um, and John had a call with Chris and, and, and an email. And a meeting. And a meeting. <laughs> and we reiterated that in the June meeting and Vince took the notes. So. Okay, I just, in the May minutes, it talks specifically about the tender and consensus. I just, not sure how critical those minutes, like if they need to be amended. Larry, can we, if we, if you're two minutes, two, so you've had a meeting in May, you approved the minutes in June, can you go back and revisit your approval? You could, yeah, if it's important enough. I think it's important enough, we'll revisit it. Would it be a motion to reconsider? Motion to amend, yeah. I mean, if you want the technical answer, it'd be reconsideration, which is a, a question that has to be voted on, and then you take action and then re reapprove. And if it deadlocks, does that just go into the minutes? Yes. For July? But the old, but the initial minute approval would stand? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But it'll be in the minutes the of the minute. new meeting that you brought it up and I mean if you just want it on the record it's so on even the record. if it deadlocks it's still on record so right. yeah we'll we'll revisit it okay because she actually emailed me Kim emailed me wants agenda items for next week so I'll be happy to add, add that one thank you all right thanks Sarah all right anything else on fire district then we'll move to law enforcement committee uh, we met on June 27th uh, the normal suspects were covered, uh, monthly uh, incidences, et cetera, and we did some more um, additional deep dive into those. Uh, Chief's been kind of um, presenting different graphs and stuff to tease out that information for the, for the committee. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary, you know, you know, the incidences have increased just basically based on officer, mostly on officer uh, initiation of, of things like uh, property checks and things of that nature. Um, went through, you know, detective report, SRO, and kind of the wrap up of the year for, for the SRO, uh, at least until we get back into the fall. And then K9, of course, uh, always busy as well. So that's what was the meeting in its sense. And Chief, I don't know if I missed anything or um, Sarah, Chris. Okay. Then we'll move to the Planning Commission. So I'll start us off and then see where that goes. So we, we met on July 12th, um, fairly light agenda, but we do have a discussing a couple of discussing considers as a result of that. Um, we uh, talked about Dipman Dog Daycare. Uh, they're looking in the commission uh, recommend approval of both their um, construction of a 4,800 square feet Foot doggy daycare uh, building on Progress Drive um, <clears throat> with condi staff conditions, of course. Then covered um, lot re uh, coverage requirements. So we're going to do some more there. Um, Aaron is doing the lifting there. And then move right to discuss consider, consider approval of the park and open space uh, plan again, which was recommended for approval by uh, the Plan Commission. So that was a fairly brief meeting uh, for the Planning Commission, but um, you have the two discussing considers there. We start off with Dip and Dog Daycare. I don't know if uh, Todd's on or Aaron, you want to cover it? Um, Todd is there. We don't have to put him on the spot. If, okay. if there's questions, he's available. Um, You'll recall we approved the conditional use permit for this last time, approving the use. This is, as you said, the specific site layout, site plan. Um, we did, plan commission did choose to approve it with conditions. Um, those are that they shall provide a landscaping plan uh, documenting uh, they're complying with the ordinance. Half the site is wooded, so we're not really worried about having enough landscaping points. It's just getting the right amount up in the front of the site. Uh, they provided Details on the lighting fixtures. We just need a plan showing where each fixture is being implemented. Uh, the third one is just our standard reminder about getting a sign permit. And then the fourth one, um, Todd's working with 
um, Hamburg, they're doing the site grading and things like that. So if there's any outstanding details on erosion control or stormwater, we'll just have uh, Strand coordinate with Hamburg on those. Questions from board members? Make a motion to approve the request from Todd. Uh, how do you say his last name? I'm oh, sorry. Ailish, sorry. Dip and Dog Daycare for approval of a site plan to construct an approximately 4,800 square foot doggy daycare building on parcel number 0711 162 2166 1. Located immediately east of 400 Progress Drive. All right, we have a first from David. Is there a second? Second. Second from Sarah. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. Uh, then we move to the uh, park and open space plan, again recommended by the uh, commission for approval. Yeah, so um, in order to get grants from the DNR, you need to have a park plan that's been approved within the last five years. So our current one was approved back in 2018. Um, so I've been working with Sean and the Parks Committee for the last year or so, uh, getting our plan updated. Um, the general format is, is the same. It is the contents are kind of dictated by the DNR. Um, updated the data, the census data, uh, things like that. Our updated our comparisons of our facilities and amenities and data compared to other communities. Um, some of that other community data gathered by the National Park uh, Association. Uh, updated all our maps to show the current facilities that have changed over the last few years updated our future park maps to show where we'd plan future ones and future developments, um, and then upgraded the implementation with new cost estimates prepared by Strand. Um, and there was one new goal added um, just related to uh, the importance of trails and paths within the village. Thanks, Aaron, and Parks Committee and st other staff. Uh, any questions or comments there? No, I just want to thank, thank the team. That was a long document to put together, so thanks for updating it. And I will make a motion that we approve the 2023 Park and Open Space Plan. Second. First by Sarah, second by Brittany. Uh, any further discussion? Just, just one comment to um, add on to what Sarah was saying. Uh, uh, thank you to, to Aaron, because normal, you would see a lot, in a lot of communities, certainly our size, would contract those kind of updates out and you know we have Aaron on on staff that's able to to assist with that so you know I don't know what the dollar amount of that is but it's probably you know it's probably approaching 20 grand so thank you Aaron don't make him blush <laughs> all right we have a motion second then any other discussion all right then all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. And that was Planning Commission. Um, next then, uh, we have reports from village officers. Larry. I will pass tonight. All right. Uh, so all your time will be taken up by Cameron. Um, not a whole lot to discuss about the budget amendment. Um, so the final bonds were sold on June 22nd. We haven't had a board meeting since then, but really when I get that information, I have the final numbers that are applicable to our current year budget. Um, so I wanted to bring those numbers in front of you, update what the anticipated project costs and, and what the financials will end up looking like. So there's no changes to the information presented. This is all been discussed and I had just reattached all the attachments um, and here to answer questions if, if anyone has one. I like that there's no changes, that's good. Yeah, Greg did, I mean, Greg did a great job of, est especially in the market that we're in, estimating a month ahead of selling the bonds to get us right where we needed to be. 
And then you have a back end uh, park improvements as well as uh, budget amendment. So that's all those items are related to the budget amendment. And again, just reattach the document so you all had, um, if you had any questions about the specific numbers in the amendment. Okay. So no other updates. All right. Any questions from Hammer or Matt? You want to make Related to just a, as part of a finance director update, more so a follow up to um, Sarah's question on uh, assessed value, equalized value. Um, these are the last uh, five years. Uh, 2023 is not official yet. Those are preliminary numbers. They should be finalized by the state next month. Um, so from the, the equalized value is, is, is often used to compare municipalities because that's the most apples to apples across the state. Um, assessed value is our locally assessed number and once we fall outside of uh, either 90% of assessed to equalized va value ratio or 110, um, then, then you have, I think it's five years to come back within that or, or have a revaluation done. So if 2023 holds, that puts us at you know, 80 some percent. So we would, we would want to start planning for uh, a revaluation and um, uh, but, but anyway, for equalized value from 22 to 23, um, that's about a 23% increase, but uh, m most importantly for us is 7% of that is directly tied to new construction, which is really exciting because that will allow us to uh, have a, a little bit more flexibility um, in, in our levy. Uh, not a full, that doesn't mean you have that full 7%, it's only for a portion of our of our levy, but that is uh, certainly better than communities that aren't growing. Um, and uh, to put that into uh, um, to tie tie this into the Amazon project, so you know 200 and 245 million more on top of this, that would be an additional 20 percent. Of course, that's th there will be other values added between now and then, and um, and, and we, you know, it's a two-year project for the Amazon project, so we would an anticipate that 245 million fully being realized by January 1 of 2026. Um, so just a summary on our values. Any questions on that? I don't have any questions on that, but do we need to make a motion for the budget amendment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are we ready to do that? I'd be happy to make a motion for the budget amendment 2023-006 as presented. Second. Second. Ooh, that was high. Uh, it's dealer's choice. Yeah, let's say Brittany. She's smiling a little more than you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, second, third, second, third. All right, uh, any other discussion on the budget amendment? All right, having heard done, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. Then we move to communication miscellaneous business, starting off with consideration of the vouchers. We have two sets of them this time since we didn't meet earlier in the month. Any questions, comments regarding those? I'll move that we approve the vouchers as presented for July 6th and July 17th. Second. All right, motion by Sarah, seconded by David. Um, any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. Uh, correspondence. Uh, I don't have any, but does anyone else? No one sends us letters anymore, um, just emails. All right, uh, then we'll move right to upcoming community events. Um, for those that went down to just in the past on Saturday, market days, um, it was a fairly decent crowd. I think probably maybe a record. I look That's like what to me. I, I heard from Britt today. Yeah. Chat. It was fun. So 
And I want to thank all those people that dunked me in the water. <laughs> and they sent in some little strikers too, some young, young uh, guns. Uh, with if, if JJ arms. doesn't agree, we can make an agenda item next. I, I've been proposing dunk the deputy. I think that has a nice, a nice <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> but we don't know if that's a good retention uh, <laughs> technique or not. So, based on my body, no. <laughs> And all the water went up my nose. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to quickly comment on, on that. That was great to see the community out and uh, in force. So, and then thank the staff that uh, held down the uh, tent for the village as well. So other things coming up, we're in the heart of summer. Chief? I will uh, just put an early plug in. Uh, don't forget about August 17th, community night out. Bakken Park, 4 to 10 p.m. Lots of uh, fun and festivities to be had by all. So look forward to seeing everybody there. All right. Thanks, Chief. Do we need to extend the park hours? 10? Or is that the park hour? That's Wasn't the park hours. Okay. <laughs> so one final. Pickleball is nine. Uh, that's what it was. That's where it sticks in your mind. What's that? I actually don't notice it too much. I hear it a little once in a while. It's usually the uh, the yelling is what I hear. <laughs> but obviously they're having fun, so that's good. Or at least it sounds like it. Um, so, to, uh, no, it's like, yay. So um, tonight was the, all courts were full, and there were people standing around waiting. I was going to say there were cars lined up. For yeah, so the park was full with that, and then uh, baseball, the leagues. So it was nice to see. All right, then we'll move down to future agenda items. I have a request. I'm not sure if it's a tag team between Cameron and Larry or Matt. Would you next meeting or at some point be able to update us on the shared revenue bill and how that impacts us in Cottage Grove? Thanks. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Thank you, Sarah. That's hot off the presses, too. Um, other items? Matt, anything that you want to? Obviously, we'll have prioritization stuff. Um, we do expect a PAA will be ready to present their report on the findings of the um, EMS request for information. Okay. So they're they're wrapping it up now. They're they're doing some kind of follow up interviews to get context related answers to the responses that we received. Okay. Anybody else? All right, uh, only one item left. Motion to adjourn. First by Brittany, is there a second? Second. Second by David, non-debatable, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks everybody, have a good rest of your week.